ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet is brought to you by Chesterfield, made by Liggett and Myers, first major tobacco company to give you a complete line of quality cigarettes. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a robbery detail. Two hold-up men have been operating in your city. You've got descriptions of the men and of the car they're driving. Your job, get them. Smokers by the thousands are now changing to Chesterfield. No wonder. More and more smokers are learning this fact for themselves. Chesterfield, low in nicotine, highest in quality. A published fact proved by chemical analyses of the country's six leading cigarette brands. Chesterfield, the only cigarette ever with a record like this. Regular or king size, Chesterfield is best for you. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, April 14th. It was warm in Los Angeles. We were working the day watch out of robbery detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Chief of Detectives Thad Brown. My name's Friday. We were on our way out from the office, and it was 10.46 a.m. when we got to the corner of Calhoun Street and Van Nuys Boulevard. The Universal Hobby Shop. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? We'd like to see Stanley McGowan, please. Oh, Stan's not in right now. Anything I can do for you? When do you expect him? He shouldn't be long. He just went out for some coffee. Are you sure there's nothing I can do? No, sir. You know where he went? No, I don't. Probably up the street. He'll be right back, though, if you want to wait. All right, fine. Uh, pull up a couple of those stools. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. You mind if I go ahead with this? I can get it finished this afternoon. No, sir. You go right ahead. Pretty jazzy deals. You seen them? What's that? Hey, these boat models. Put them in a bottle. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a new one. Just came in. Take a look. Jean Lafitte's boat. Pretty, isn't it? How's that? Uh, Lafitte, the pirate, you know. Oh, yeah. How do you get it inside the bottle? Well, the bottle comes in two halves. It's uh, cut apart lengthwise. You put the boat in and glue the halves together. Uh, there are a couple all finished over there. Look pretty good. Mm -hmm. How long has McGowan been working here? Oh, I guess it's been about six months around in there. You guys friends of his? We want to talk to him. Oh. That's funny about him. What's that? Well, he doesn't seem to have any close friends. Hey, you know, like you could call up and ask a favor from. Never hear him talk about anybody like that. You ever seen any of his associates? Oh, a couple of times when we get ready to close up, there might be a guy waiting for Stan. Most of the time he plays a single, though. I've tried a couple of times to get him out, you know, stop the bar on the way home, have a couple of drinks. Stan won't have any part of it, plays it single. Do you have a car, would you know? Mm, not that I've ever seen. Hey, say, will you hand me that gold paint over there? Yeah, sure. This one? Uh, no, no, this, the small one there. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Here you are. Ah, thanks. And a little bit of this goes a long way. Touch up the tops of the mast here and she'll be ready to rig. Well, these friends of his that pick him up, what kind of car do they drive? Say, uh, what are all these questions for? Who are you guys? Police officers. This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. Mm, cops. Uh, well, what do you want with Stan? He done something? We just want to talk to him. I sure hope it isn't anything serious. I'd sure hate to lose Stan. Is that so? Yeah, he's one of the best riggers we've ever had. There's a couple of his models over there. Take a look. That one in the case, $150, old Ironsides. One of the best boats we've turned out. Stan did that. Sure got a steady hand. And that's what it takes when it comes to rigging, steady hand. Want to go out now, Rudy? Uh, yeah, yeah, in a minute. A uh, couple of fellas here want to talk to you. You want to see me? Your name's Stanley McGowan? Yeah, that's right. What's this about? A cop, Stan. Yeah? This is Frank Smith. My name's Friday. I'd like to talk to you, McGowan. You sure, what about? Might be better if we went out to the car, huh? Make no difference to me. Uh, you fellas stay here. I'll go out for some coffee. All right, thank you. Uh, bring you back some? No. No, no, thanks. Uh, I won't be long. OK. What are you going to talk to me about? You seen Jim Boland lately? No, I haven't. When did you see him last? A couple months ago. Why? Where'd you see him? He well, come in here, want to know if I could help him out, give him a job, place to sleep. Did you? No, I told him he could bunk at my place for a couple of days till he got squared away. Nothing I could do about a job. Why'd he come to you? I don't know. I met him at Q. Didn't have much to do with him. 
Hey, why'd you guys come to me? What makes you think I might be running with him? We didn't say you were. Same thing. You figure I know where he is? Well, the record says you knew him. We're just checking it out. I got nothing to do with him. I'm reporting every month. You check with my parole officer. He'll tell you. I've been carrying a bucket since the day I got out of the joint. I'm going to keep on carrying it. We got no beefs with you, McGowan. We just want to get in touch with Bowen. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do to help you out. Anything comes up, I'll give you a call. He mentioned any of his friends in town when you saw him? Some guy named Phil, that's all. You know who he is? No, I never met him. Jim said they were cooking up some kind of deal. You know what it was? No. Look, I'd like to feed you guys, but there's nothing I can tell you. As far as I'm concerned, I want to stay away from Jim and the crowd he runs with. I want no part of him. I did my time. A couple more months, I'll finish up with the parole. I don't want to fall again. Nothing you can tell us about this guy, Phil, huh? Not a thing. You know where he met Bolin? Seems like Jim mentioned it. I think it was some bar down on West 7th. It's just a guess, though. I couldn't back it. You know if Phil drove a car? Yeah. You know what kind? It seems like it was a Lincoln, a late model sedan. How about the color? It was dark. I saw it once when he came by to pick up Jim. It was nighttime. I couldn't tell too good. It was just a dark color. Where was this? My place. I told you Jim bumped with me a couple of days right after he got in town. He just said you offered to let him stay with you. Is that right? Well, same thing. Anyway, he was only there a couple of days. You say where he was going? No. I didn't see him. Him and me had a beef about how he wasn't looking for a job. He used to sit around all day reading magazines. We finally had a fight about it. I told him to get out. I wanted no part of him. I came home that night. He was gone. I haven't seen him since. I don't much want to either. Mm-hmm. Look, what are you after him for? What's he done? Just want to talk to him. He got a piece of these market jobs around town? Why do you ask that? Well, it sounds like Jim, the way he works. I just figured maybe it was him. He checked the board, he violated parole. They tell us he hasn't shown up for three weeks. That's too bad. Kind of figured maybe he'd swing it this time. How do you mean? A couple of times up in the joint, we'd get to talk, and he said he finally learned it. Figured out there was no way to beat it. Said if he got his parole, he's going to stick by it. Get a job, carry a bucket. Too bad. Mm -hmm. All that talk, I really believed he meant it. So did the parole board. Six weeks before, on March 3rd, the manager of a large supermarket had arrived at work. When he opened the front door, he found that a customer had followed him into the building. When the manager told the person that the store wasn't open for business yet, the man had drawn a gun and demanded that the safe be opened. The manager complied, and after taking $1,400 from the safe, the thief had fled. The manager was able to give us a good description of the holdup man and an accurate description of his car. He was unable to give us the license number, and he could tell us little about the man who remained in the car. Immediate broadcasts were gotten out on the thieves, but they'd apparently made good their escape. On March 12th, the procedure was repeated. Again, we were able to get good descriptions, but we were unable to come up with the suspects. In the following four weeks, the thieves hit five more times. Each time, the M.O. employed was the same. The descriptions from each of the victims tallied with those that we'd already gotten. The description of the car was the same. This information was turned over to the stats office for compilation. Their findings listed 14 possible suspects. The packages of these men were pulled from R&I and the mug shots were shown to the victims. In each instance, one picture was picked as bearing a close resemblance to the holdup man. The prime suspect was identified as James Boland, WMA, 32 years old. He'd been arrested twice for violation of section 211 of the penal code. He'd been convicted once and had been sentenced to San Quentin for a period of from five years to life. However, at the prison, his behavior and attitude had been good, and he'd been paroled on February 19th, 10 days before the first holdup. We found that Boland had violated his parole and was wanted by the state adult authority. A check of his friends netted us no new information. His relatives could tell us nothing about his whereabouts. The legwork continued. Informants were questioned, but were of no material aid. Saturday, April 18th, 8.46 p.m. I'd just gotten home from work, and I was unlocking my front door. Hello? Oh, yeah, Dave. Mm hmm Yeah, well, I just got it. When was that? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I'll have to call my partner. Right. Yeah, where? Yeah, I know where that is. Well, let's see. It's 8.47 now. It'll take us about, oh, 15, 20 minutes. Right. Okay, we'll see you there. Yeah, sure. Bye. Faye? Yeah. Frank there yet? What if I could talk to him? Yeah. Hello, Frank? I just got a call from Dave Hyde. Yeah. Says he wants to see us right away. Bar down on 6th Street. Yeah. No, all the way downstairs. Okay. What? Yeah. No, he says he knows where we can find Jim Boland. Ten minutes later, Frank picked me up and we drove down to the cocktail lounge that our informant, David Hyde, had picked as a meeting place. When we walked in, we couldn't see Hyde, but the bartender told us that he was in one of the rear booths. We walked back. 
All right, fellas, sit down. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. What do you got for us? Lousy bum, all the things I did for him, all the things, and now he's got a chance to settle up, and he says he's having no part of me. You talking about Boland? Boland, what a bum. All I done for him, this is the way he pays me back. Boy, you just wait till I spread the word around. There won't be anybody in town will have anything to do with him. He's through in this town. T-H-R-E-W. All right, Dave, settle down and give us the word. Where'd you see him? Bar over on 7th. Big man now. Got a roll. Looks like a branch of Fort Knox. A lot of money. But he's too good for his old friends. Too good. Say, uh, how about you fellas popping for a drink for a pal? Huh? How about it? You've had enough. Come on. When'd you see Bowling? Just this morning. Big man. Got good clothes. Driving a big car. Asked him for a loan. Just to get squared away. Pick up a couple of tabs I got around town. Just see me over the hump. You know what kind of car he's driving? Yeah. Big Lincoln. Brand new. Got red leather trim on the seats. Even got one of those seats that goes up and down, but he can't give a pal a helping hand. I, I spread this word around town, he's really finished. Ain't a guy in town to touch him with a 12-foot pole or a real darb, a real darb. You know where he's living? Nah, I don't know. Probably got a house out in Bel Air. It looks like he can afford it. Who's he running with, you know? Yeah, some guy's lighting cigarettes. What's Supposed that? To... Some guy who's lights the cigarettes oh, all the yeah. time. Supposed to be some gun from the east. Thinks he's such a big shot. The cheap kind, you know. Kind of guy who has his suits cut so as you can see they're carrying a gun. You know, cheap. You know this fellow's name? Uh, a couple of times I heard old Jim call him Phil. Phil something, I don't know. A real dark. Hey, fellas, uh, how about a drink? I'm feeling real bad. You still on age? Oh, no, 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 I swear to you. I haven't had a pop in a long time. I, I'm trying to get off the stuff. Figured if I could get drunk enough, it wouldn't be so bad. Rough go. Come on, how about a drink? You've had enough, Dave. You know if Boland's carrying a gun? I don't know for sure. I didn't see one. This Darb Phil's got one. Got his coat cut so as you can see it. Real cheap, small time. You want to show us where you saw Bolin? I'll take you there if I have to carry you on my back. What a way to treat a friend. All the times I've helped him when, when he's had a bad yen, and now he treats me this way. Real dog in a manger. I got a lot of friends in this town, a lot of buddies. Word gets out about Jim, he's finished. Miserable bum. I think about the rough times him and me had together, I, I get ill. I L. All right, let's go. If you nail him, are you going back to the joint? Suppose so. How long are they going to give him? It's up to the court. Ain't a court in the world that'll give that bum what he's got coming. All I want to see is that he gets it good. I want to see him turn the key and lose it after what he did to me. I'll tell you something else, too. Yeah, what's that? He's building a big habit. Is he hooked? He ain't chipping with it. I bet money he's shooting four or five caps a day. That much easy. You sure about that? Why'd I lie to you? What reason I got to lie? All right, Hyde, let's go. Hey, um, how about a quick belt before we go, huh? I'm, I'm feeling rocky. Just, just, just a quick one. Let's huh? pick up Bolin first, then we'll see what we can do for you. Yeah, and then you'll take care of it, huh? We'll see. Yeah, just so he gets his every pound. Can't wait to see the look on his face when he finds out the whistle's been blown. Oh, I can't wait. Neither can we. Let's go. 9.13 p.m. Hyde, Frank, and I drove over to West 7th Street. Our informant pointed out the bar where he'd seen the suspect, Boland. He told us that when he'd seen him last, Boland said that he'd be in the bar that night. We called the office and told them where we were, and then we went into the place. Boland wasn't there, but the bartender said that he was expected. The three of us sat down in a booth at the rear of the place, and we ordered black coffee for our informant. We waited. 9.30 p.m. 10. 10.30. There he is, coming in now. When you saw him this morning, did he say this guy Phil was going to be here? No, not to me. How about it, Joe? You better get out of here, Dave. Use the side door, will you? Yeah. We'll check with you later. All right, let's go. Boland? What? You Jim Boland? What do you want? Police officers, you're under arrest. All right, Boland, come on, get up. Come on, on your feet. Mm. Stand still. He's clean, Joe. What's going on? What are you pulling a deal like this for? I didn't cause any trouble. All right, come on, let's go. Somebody blew the whistle on me. Somebody did. I... I'm going to find out, and I'm going to get to him. I swear I'll get to him. Where's Phil? Huh? Phil, where is he? I don't know what you're talking about. All right, Boland, let's go. Listen, you tell whoever it was blew the whistle, they better start looking for a place to hide, because I'm going to get to him if it's the last thing I do. You called it. What? It might be. Ten fourteen p.m. We returned the suspect to the city hall and questioned him. He refused to admit any complicity in the holdups. He refused to tell us who Phil was. We talked to him for five and a half hours and we got nothing. At 3.30 a.m., he was taken over to the main jail and booked in on suspicion of robbery. 
We checked out the room that he told us he was living in, but we were unable to come up with anything that would tie him in with the holdups. Three days passed. On Tuesday, April 21st at 8.30 p.m., a special show-up was arranged. Out of the seven victims who were present, five said that the suspect looked very much like the man who had held them up, but none of them would give us a positive identification. Jim Boland was returned to the felony cell block, and we talked to the victims. All of them commented on the fact that the suspect we had in custody was the same height, the same weight, and had the same general coloring and appearance as the person who'd robbed them. However, none of them would swear positively that he was the person. At 10.15 p.m., Frank and I went up to the felony section and had Boland brought from his cell to the interview room. His previous sullen attitude had changed considerably. How'd I make out? You get any identification? Five of them say you look like the man. Well, they're wrong. They gotta be. I didn't have nothing to do with those holdups. If they say I'm the guy, then they're making a bad mistake. They seem pretty sure about what they say. Well, they can't be. Look, they saw me behind the screen. You bring them up here. Let me talk to them face to face. I'll talk to them. I got nothing to hide. Just let me talk to them. You know we can't do that. I thought it was up to you to prove a guy was innocent as well as trying to make him for a job. That's right, it is. Then why don't you give me a break? I got no part in these heights. You look good for him. Probably a lot of other guys who do too, but that don't mean they are. Come on, what do I have to do to make you believe? Why don't you come off of this, Boland? We got you going in. Why not play it smart and cop out? How can I cop out when I got no part in it? I'll lay it out for you. The M.O. used in the jobs matches yours. Big deal. A lot of guys work the way I used to. Physical description we got matches you. So I haven't got two heads. A lot of guys look like me. The beef in the bar. If you didn't have anything to worry about, why'd you start the fight? How'd I know who you guys were? Maybe you was out to pull a high Oh, that's a nice try, Boland, but it won't work. You knew we were officers. Now, why don't you save us a lot of time and tell us the truth here? You guys wouldn't know it if it'll bit you. There's one way to find out. Yeah? Try it. You got a cigarette? Here. You want one? Yeah. Okay. I'll level with you. I figured you was after me for PV. I didn't have any idea about the 211 rap. That why you started the fight? I swear it is. How about the money you got? Where'd it come from? I got real lucky with a pair of dice. You expect us to believe that? That's the way things are. Where'd you hit the luck? I can't tell you that. It wouldn't help any. Give you an alibi. Either you believe it or you don't. That's the way it was. I'm trying to level with you. We got a rumble that you're back on H. Now, how about that? Where'd you hear that? We heard it. Yeah. Well, you tell them I haven't had a pop in over four years. Not since I went up the joint. How about this Lincoln you're driving? Don't belong to me. Who owns it? Phil. Now we're back to that. You gonna tell us who Phil is? Listen, the guy's a friend of mine. I don't want to bring nothing down on him. He's leaving you way out in the cold. Yeah, I suppose so. Well, if I tell you, you won't know, will he? Not from us. Okay. Name's Phil Spence. How well do you know him? Say hello to him, buy him a drink, that's all. That's not the way we get it. I don't care how you get it. That's the way it is. Suspense. You ever fallen? I hear yes. What for? 211, ADW. Where? Here, California. He on parole? No, he got out clean. At least that's the way I hear it. You know where we can pick him up? I told you I buy him a beer once in a while. I don't pay his rent. You're the one who said you wanted to go down the middle. All right, but I'm giving it to you that way. I, I don't know where his pad is. Does he work for a living? I don't know. I never heard him talk about a job. You know who he runs with? Some guy named Ed. You ever see him? No. Know where he can be reached? Sometimes they hang around the bar where you picked me up. How about it, fellas? You're going to buy this story? Yeah, we'll check it out. I swear it, I got no part in it. Sure, you got me cold for PV. I know I got to go back for that, but I want nothing to do with the rest. We'll check it out. Well, you do that. You'll find out what I said's the truth. You willing to identify these two other guys for us? How do you mean? Check over some mugs? Sure. Just as long as you believe me. We'll see. You won't regret it. A lot of things I can tell you if you get me out of this. A lot of information I can give you. Let's go. You're going to give me a break, huh? We'll check it. Say, either one of you guys got some extra butts. I'm out. Yeah, here. Take these. Thanks. Anything else you need? Not unless you can fix it for me to shave. We'll talk to the jailer about it. <laughs> Beard's starting to itch. I'd like to get it off. We'll see what we can do. You going to start checking my story now? That's right. You go to work on it. You'll find out. Yeah, sure. I'll pay you back. Just believe me, I'll pay you back. Figure he's telling the truth? It's hard to say. The identifications weren't too sure. Everything else is. There's only one way. Yeah. Check him out. You are listening to Dragnet, the authentic story of your police force in action. At cigarette dealers, in vending machines, 
at supermarkets and stores coast to coast. Chesterfields, please. Smokers by the thousands. Yes, smokers by the thousands are now changing to Chesterfield. The only cigarette ever to give you one proof of low nicotine, highest quality. Chemical analyses of the country's six leading brands confirm that. Two, the only cigarette ever to give you this proven record with smokers. Again and again, over a full year and one half, a group of Chesterfield smokers have been given thorough medical examinations. The doctor's reports are a matter of record. No adverse effects to the nose, throat, and sinuses from smoking Chesterfield. A responsible independent research laboratory supervises this continuing program. Chesterfield, the only cigarette ever with a record like this. Chesterfield, best for you. Tuesday, April 21st. After we left the suspect, Jim Boland, at the main jail, Frank and I went back to the city hall and checked the name Phil Spence through R&I. There were nine packages carrying records for men with that name. Two of them had served terms for robbery in the state penitentiary at Folsom, California. We got off communications to George Brereton up at Sacramento and to Washington, requesting information on known criminals having that name. 12.30 a.m., we went back to the jail and had Boland brought from his cell. We showed him the mug shots from the packages we had, but he failed to give us an identification. We talked to him about Phil Spence. He gave us all of the information he could about the missing suspect's habits. At this point, we were still not sure that Boland wasn't implicated in the holdups, but we had to check out what facts we had. The one point which seemed to verify Boland's story was that the victims were unable to give a positive identification of him. 1.30 a.m., we went back to the office and checked out for the night. The following morning, Wednesday, April 22nd, we started to recheck Boland's story of his movements during the times of the holdups. Upon re-questioning some of the witnesses, we found that they weren't as sure as they had been of the facts. That afternoon, we got a kickback from Sacramento. It contained three more possibles. CII said that they were sending us mug shots of the men by airmail special delivery. Bowen gave us a list of places Spence was known to frequent. We came up with the name of a girl that the suspect was known to see from time to time. We got the address and we went out to talk to her. Doesn't look like she's home. We better check with the manager, huh? Yeah. Yeah? Eugene Schofield? Why? We'd like to see her. Who are you? Police officers. Come in. I'm her. What do you want? I'd like to ask you a few questions. No, I figured that. Move some of those clothes and sit down. Can I get you anything? Drink, maybe? No, no ma'am. Thank you. All right. What do you want to talk about? How long has it been since you've seen Phil Spence? Who says I know him? We understand you know him pretty well. I've gone out with him a couple of times. That's the end of it. When did you see him last? A couple of days ago. Monday night, I think. You know where he is now? No. You know where he lives? Some hotel over on Flower. You know the name of the place? No. You ever been there? No. You know what Spence does for a living? I don't know. Got some kind of a job, I guess. He ever talked to you about what he does? I told you. I'd just been out with him a couple of times. I didn't ask for his birth certificate. I just said I'd go out with him. What are all these questions about anyway? What do you want to talk to Phil about? It's a personal matter. What kind of trouble is he in now? You've been in trouble before? I don't know. Just with you cops around, must be something he's done. Spence got any close friends that you know of? A couple. You know who they are? One of them is a guy named Jim something. How about the rest? A fellow he calls Ed. What do you know about Ed? Not much. Is he in it too? Ma'am? He mixed up in this personal thing you want to talk to Phil about? Maybe. Never did like him. I always figured he'd end up getting Phil in trouble. Phil see quite a bit of him? Yeah. I think he's maybe in some kind of business deal with him. You ever say what the deal was? Well, not to me. One night a couple of weeks ago, he got real looped, and him and Phil were talking about it. What'd they say? I don't know. Phil told me to go pat on my nose. I don't know what they said. And how do you know what they talked about? Because when I came back, I heard Phil say something about how the deal was going to work out all right. Then he saw me, and they shut up. Phil owns a car, doesn't he? Yeah, a new Lincoln. You ever let anybody else drive it? Well, once in a while, he lets Jim take it. Not often. Phil's kind of touchy about the car. Say, how'd you fellas know about me? Routine. Check and fill out. Your name came up. Oh. That's all, huh? Ma'am? I'm not mixed up in it. You can answer that better than we can. Yeah. Well, I want you to know that I'm not. I got nothing to do with Phil. Mm -hmm. I mean it. I just met the guy. I had a couple of dates with him. He's hung up in something. I got nothing to do with it. You gotta believe that. When are you gonna see Spence again? Well, you believe what I tell you, don't you? If he's in trouble, I got no part of it. When are you gonna see him again, lady? You mean when have I got a date? Yes, ma'am. Tomorrow night. 
She's going to pick me up when I get through work. Where's that? Bar down in Olympic. I'm a hostess there. Is that where you met him? Yeah, he came in one night. We got to talk. He asked me for a date. I don't want you to get the wrong idea about it, though. Ma'am? Well, about how I met him. I don't usually go out with the customers. Boss doesn't like it. It's just that Phil seemed kind of different. That's the reason I went out with him. I want you to get that straight. Mm-hmm. Just a minute. You expecting anybody? No, I don't know who it is. Want me to open it? Yeah, go ahead. What took you so long, honey? I got cut me, Phil. I know him? I don't think so. Hi. Huh. You Phil Spence? Yeah, who are you? Police officers would like to talk to you. What about? Might be better if we went downtown. Or who? What? I don't want to go downtown. You don't have much to say about it, mister. He's a pinch. If it makes you happy, mark it down that way. You want to shake him, Frank? Yeah. Get away from me, cop. What are you doing, breaking up my place? Get out of here! Get out of here and take that cheap off with you! All right, come on, get out. Come on, get out. You get out of here. Lousy deal. Get out of here, my deal, coming in and breaking up a girl's apartment. Who's going to pay for all this? Who's going to make it right? Just look at the place. Oh, shut up. Why don't you tell me they were here? Why didn't you say something? All right, Spence, let's go. I'm coming. All I want to know is who told you. Who yapped? That lousy Eddie, I bet. He's the one. Never should have picked him up. He with you on the jobs? He told you, didn't he? How about Jim Boland? He in with you, too? Oh, that guy hasn't got enough sense to come in out of the rain. He's worse than Ed. Should have known not to get mixed up with that dumb Eddie. I should have known. Always happens. Yeah. You run with a jerk, you're going to get tripped up. Lousy Eddie shooting off his mouth. Hadn't been for him, you'd never got us. I'm going to tell him off. What's the difference? You told them everything they wanted to know, you're all going to jail. Why don't you shut up? You're always wrong, sister. Not this time. Let's go. The story you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On August 13th, trial was held in Department 92 of Superior Court of the State of California in and for the County of Los Angeles. In a moment, the results of that trial. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. Well, this is brief, but I think very much to the point. Chesterfield is the only cigarette that gives you proof of low nicotine, highest quality. That's what I want in my cigarette, and that's what you should look for in yours. Chesterfield, regular or king size, best for you. Try them. Philip Donald Spence and Edwin Floyd Morse were tried and convicted on four counts of robbery in the first degree and were sentenced as prescribed by law. Robbery in the first degree is punishable by imprisonment in the state penitentiary for a period of not less than five years. Jim Nathan Boland was released to the state adult authority for action on violation of his parole. He was returned to San Quentin for the balance of his original term. <laughs> just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors, Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Herb Bygren, Vic Perrin, Michael Ann Barrett. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Watch an entirely new Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. Have you tried new cork tip Fatima? It's the smooth smoke with Fatima tips of perfect cork. King size for longer filtering and Fatima quality for a much better flavor and aroma. Fatima is made and guaranteed by Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company. Try Fatima today. Hear Frank Sinatra as Rocky Fortune tonight on the NBC radio network.